you so much, God, that you considered us to do great things, God, in our lives. We just praise you for that. I thank you for your sweet anointing that is here. We just want to, we just want to worship you, Lord. We just want to give you praise. I just, Lord, feel like bowing at your feet, just, just staying there for a while in your presence. Lord, I know you have a word for us. I pray, God, that you would use me to bring this word forward today. I, we're excited, Lord, about people who have connected with us as a family. More importantly than that, these who have, they've given their heart to, to you. And today they're going to public, publicly confess their faith in Jesus. And we're just so amazed. And I know that heaven is rejoicing today. We just, we just ask you, Lord, just to, just to move and minister among us. We don't want to restrain you or limit you in any way. Just, just take over, Lord. Take over. We just pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the praise team a Maybe. 
me also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want to start off today just by simply saying this. I don't have a place in this world. I don't have a place in this world. Jesus began by saying, let not your heart be troubled. There's a lot of people, maybe you're here today, you got a troubled heart. Maybe you thought you had a place, but now it seems like that place is, is no longer. Maybe you were settled in and, and thought you knew the path your life was going to take you. And you, you thought you knew what things were going to look like. And you, you thought your future was set and something has happened and it's just turned your world upside down. And things have changed suddenly and, and you're looking for that place and you're wondering. And I just want to say, we don't have a place here. Our place is not here. There's a lot of people looking for relief here. A lot of people looking for peace and things that are found here. But we, we don't, our place is not here. Our relief is not here. The word let in the Bible is God's way of saying, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Is God's way of saying that you're going to play a part in this. You're going to have something to do with this. You're going to need to be involved in, in this time in your life. And God has not called you to sit by idly and watch your life be destroyed. God has called you to play an active part, to have a recourse in this time of trouble, to, to stand up, to stand strong and say, I'm going to have faith in God and God is going to give me the peace I need. I can't find it in circumstances and people or in situations, but I can find it peace in God, and I can be in that place where my heart is not troubled the way it is. I can have faith in His promises. I can have faith in His power. I can have faith in His plans. You say, I thought I knew His plans for me. Plans have changed. God's plans haven't changed. I've said it before. I'll say it again. His plans haven't changed. His plans are and His ways, they are perfect. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes. So there is relief. How do you spell relief? It's not R-O-L-A ideas. <laughs> it's J-E-S-U-S. -S. His name is Jesus. And this is more than just a, this is more than just a verse. It's more than just a, a feel good. I really feel like the Holy Spirit acts upon His word as we look at it. And so today, if you're in that place, just take a look at what Jesus is saying. Let, stand up. <clears throat> Don't sit idly. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We're out of place. We're out of sorts. We don't fit in. We will never fit in. We're not supposed to fit in in every way, in every circumstance. We are the people of God. And it's not popular today, but God's called us to be different. God's called us to act differently than the world acts. He's called us to talk differently than the world talks. That's what He's called us. This world is not, it's not where we fit in. We're in it. We're not of it. The way is not the people, but the ways of this world and the way this world works is actually an enemy of us. In 1 John, the Bible says it like this. Don't love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. If we get so involved and interconnected to try to fit in in this world, then what happens is we just, be, we just become a part of what's passing away. Instead of realizing 
that this is not our home. We're just, we're just passing through. We are pilgrims. The old song is correct. We, we, this is not where we belong. This is not where we will find peace. We will find our peace in Jesus. As we stand strong in Jesus, as this world passes away, we remain in Him. When we get out of whack, and we all do, we try to make fulfillment in this life. I ran into somebody the other day, and you would have thought their life was over because there were, there were money problems. Anybody ever had money problems? How many knows that's not the end of life? But we get out of whack, don't we? And so we get out of whack and all of a sudden now we're trying to make, we're, we're trying to make this our place. And this is not our place. How will I make ends meet? What can make me happy? What can I do to be accepted? How will I survive? Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Believe in me. Jesus has prepared a place for me. Amen. That's what this passage says. Because you say, Pat, all right, this, if this world is not our place, where is our place? Jesus has prepared a place for us. My friend Greg got to see that place on Friday morning about 3.30 in the morning. Come on. He could preach for me today. I'm going to tell you. He could preach for me today. I'm going to I'm I'm try to have as much passion as I can. I haven't seen it with my natural eye. The Bible says eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard. It hasn't entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us. But he has revealed it to us in his spirit. And I just, as I read these words today in my spirit, there's something that rises up that says, God has something better for me. He's prepared a place for me. And it's not. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's what our Tammy, Camden, that's what they're saying today. This is not my place. I've got a place God's prepared for me. And I want the whole world to know it. I want the whole world to know it. It's going to be perfect. And God made it for us. Does anybody here feel like you're worthy of that? God did that for us. Sunday school teacher was teaching this class about heaven. He asked the children, these were smart kids. If I sold my house, he said, if I sold my house and sold my car and I had a huge yard sale and gave all the money to the church, would that get me into heaven? All the children answered, no. He said, if every day I vacuumed the church carpets, cleaned the bathrooms, mowed the grass, would that get me into heaven? Again, the children answered, no. He said, if I was kind to the poor, gave candy to children, he's trying to trip them now. And love my life. Would that get me into heaven? One more, one more time the children answered, no. He said, then how can I get into heaven? And a little five-year-old boy shouted out, you got to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's true. And you know what? That is horrible news if this is your place. But it's wonderful news when you can see this place for what it really is under the curse of sin, knowing that God's going to make a new one. That's how somebody in their prime of life battling that dreadful disease and smile and say, I'm ready for Jesus to take me home. Come on, come on. You see, there's, there's different words in the Bible that it uses for heaven. In one place, it's called a country. 
And that sort of speaks of the vastness of heaven. How big. And other places called the city. And that's sort of keying in on the people that are going to be there. And one place is called a kingdom. Indicating that there's going to be a governmental structure. That the sun will rule and reign. And one place is called a paradise. Talking about its beauty. Talking about its desirability. But here Jesus said. In my father's house. You know what he's saying? He's saying heaven is home. Place where you can be yourself. You can take off your tie, kick off your shoes. Home. We're always accepted and loved. You're not just a guest, you're a resident. You live there. That's home. Jesus is saying, I'm going to take you to my father's house, and it's going to be your home too. You're a part of the family, you'll be where you belong. I love it because he says, now I read to you the King James Version, and it says, in my father's house are many mansions. And if you look at the Greek, it's really better to translate that as dwelling places or even rooms. And they're in the culture of that day and what Jesus was alluding to, and we don't, this is just so bizarre to us in Western culture, but when someone went and got married, he brought them back to the father's home and the father built on a place for them. And he had another son that went off and got married. He built on another place to their home for them. And their home just kept getting bigger and bigger. Some of you are getting scared saying, I'm glad I live in the West, not the East. But that was part of their culture. And the picture that Jesus is, I love this picture because we picture heaven as I have a mansion here with a nice, nice yard and a mansion here with a nice yard and if I don't like the neighbors, I can have a privacy fence and I can... But the picture that Jesus paints for us, and He's really just wanting us to see it as home, is that you have the Father's house and every time someone comes to be one of His kids, He just adds on. And He says, now my house is your house. And that's an amazing thing. That may not mean much to you. And it's, it's awesome. You know, if I just had a little cabin on the backside of heaven, you know, that, that I'm not worth that. But that, that'd be incredible. Or if God even made a street just for me with my own cul de sac, that would be incredible. But for me, what lifts my spirits even more, knowing me and knowing who I am and knowing that Jesus died for me, knowing that God took his own home and added on a place just for me that's connected to him so that his home is my home. That just brings it into a whole new life for me. That touches me right there. Think about it. Much of me is already there. When you think of heaven, most of you is already there. Your name is written there. Your citizenship is there. Your God is there. Your Savior is there. Your inheritance are there. For some of you, you can say my parent is there or my grandparents are there or my children are there. People that you love, think about it. As we try to hold on to this world and we try to make this world satisfy us and we as God's children, most of us is already in heaven. Soon, as the Bible says, our life is like a vapor. It's like that. It's like that morning fog is there. You don't really see the moment it's gone, but it's just gone. That's our life. And so I can say soon the rest of me will be there. Where I belong. Where I fit in. In my father's house. See, my place is with him. How about some music, Ed, if you don't mind? My place is with him. I love what Jesus.
Jesus says here in verse 3. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. The Lord himself. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that there's coming a day if the Lord tarries and, and the, or, or if the, the Lord decides to return before we pass on from this life, the Word of God declares to us that the Lord Himself will step out and call for His people. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain will be called up together to meet them in the clouds. The Lord Himself, in other words, the promise that Jesus made, He will keep that promise. The Lord Himself. And you can believe what you want. But I believe the Lord does this also on a daily basis. I believe when one of his children pass from this life to the next, I believe the Lord himself ushers us in to our new home. You don't have to believe that. I know that's, that's out there. It's what I believe. I believe David, I believe David nailed it because the Spirit gave him the words and he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. That's the Lord fulfilled in John 14 and 3. When my friend went on to be with the Lord, his wife, his wife that morning, she knew it wasn't going to be long and their, 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 their sleep was constantly interrupted with pain and things going on and phone calls and visits and so they would just try to get sleep and spurts and she she wanted to be awake and with him when he went to be with Jesus and she told me she said I prayed that Jesus would, would make that happen and she said I, I sat beside him in those last few hours and I held his hand and I knew that, that he could slip away at any moment. And she said, I kept dozing off, you know. And she said, I had dozed off. And all of a sudden, he squeezed my hand. And when he squeezed my hand, I looked at him. And when I looked at him, he went to be with Jesus. That's it's just me. You okay? can't, it's just me. I can't verify this. The way I see things is Jesus. Say, Greg, it's time to go. Let her know. She said he had a peace on his face that only God could give. And as a pastor, I've seen that so many times. The grace that God's given, that he gives at that moment. And I'm not sure why I'm sharing this with you today. Maybe you've lost someone. Be comforted that as a child of God, they didn't transition by themselves. He was with them. It's peace. It's peace. In Revelation 21, the Word of God says, and this is our place, this is our place. Our place is with Him. He's prepared for us. The Word of God says, I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The sea had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. There shall by, be by no means entered into anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, 
that strength. Be that supernatural help for them. Let's pray right now, Lord, that your, your Holy Spirit just saturates them with peace, with hope. But you've got them. You've got them. But you weren't shocked or surprised. But you've got them. You're a strong foundation. Thank you, God, for that assurance. Today, as they just continue to play songs.